know what's wrong with me. It's like nine o'clock in the morning and I wanted to do it with, uh. <sighs> Okay. Thanks for tuning in this week. Tuning in like tune. Anyways. Hey, what's up? I thought this week's video would be great in front of my wall of where I want to travel. I made this thing like in fifth grade and I decided that poking holes in the wall was going to be a fantastic idea and I've only actually ever traveled to like, I think two of these places up here. So it's not going well for me. I thought it would be a good idea to do it in front of this wall since I am moving abroad for college and I just wanted to talk about it in this video. This video is more for people applying to NYU and NYU Shanghai and if they got accepted into NYU Shanghai and they didn't really think they would have or were kind of confused or kind of like, wow, didn't expect that. I didn't feel like there was many videos out there talking about people's experience with NYU Shanghai since it is such a new school and a lot of people just don't do YouTube and stuff. So I felt like this would be a perfect opportunity to fill the niche and to get your information. The first half of the video, I'm gonna talk about how I applied and how I think I got accepted. And the second half of the video is gonna be why I decided to accept their offer. Everyone knows that you go on Common Application and use the Common Essay and to write something for all your schools. And there's lots of tips out there, so I'm not gonna focus on that really. I will say that it will help you to find something that you like doing all four, three years of your high school, like an extracurricular outside of school, even if it is kind of academic related. When you apply to NYU, you have a section where you rank the campuses. There's three campuses. There's one in Shanghai, there's one in New York, and there's one in Abu Dhabi. And all of these are main campuses that you can get a diploma from. And they want you to rank the campuses that you would like to be accepted into, like one, two, and three. And I don't know if I just read it wrong or I was just reading too fast, but you don't have to put all three campuses down if you don't wanna to apply to all three. I thought you had to, so I did it. And maybe I'm wrong, correct me if I am, but I, you don't have to apply to all three. You can only apply to one if you really want to just go to the New York campus. A lot of people ask about people's ACT and SAT since some people have low ACTs and some people have high ACTs that get accepted. I would just say that if you're worried about that, Google the minimum, not the minimum, but like the middle range of people that get accepted into a certain university, what their ACT and SAT is. I will say my ACT is in the middle. I wish I had a higher ACT and I tried to get one, but I just bought them out at the, at the one I did get. I just couldn't get any higher and I tried after and it really, really annoyed me because I put so much time and effort into that. This is very important and this is something everyone tells you to do and I didn't do it and I think it bit me. I applied to NYU and Fordham and I got deferred from Fordham and I got accepted into a, a campus that I necessarily didn't want to get accepted into NYU. And I think that's because I only had one recommendation going in. The other recommendation that I was going to have, my teacher never sent it in and I didn't even check. When she told me she sent it in, I took her word for it, which is something you shouldn't do because it could hurt your chances going in when everyone else around you has two, three, or four. Then you have a essay, another essay to write for NYU. It's a little short, I think like 250 or 400 words. And they want you to ask, they want you to tell them why you chose NYU and why you decided to apply to that campus. And I wrote mine all about the New York campus and about that diversity, about the opportunities, and about just the different aspect that I'm gonna get coming from the South and going to the North. So I think that's also another reason why I got accepted into the Shanghai campus was because I kept talking about diversity. I kept talking about um, opportunities that I wouldn't get anywhere else and I kept talking about finance and the financial hub and Shanghai has a lot of financial businesses there. I decided to accept it because like I said before, it's completely opposite. I always wanted an opposite American education experience. 
but then I knew going to New York University or pretty much any university now, you can always have an abroad year and I always wanted to have a, um, a contrasting American education and a contrasting world education, if that makes sense. Also, you have more than one abroad. You, if you don't live in China, that's one abroad. And then your second, no, your third year, you can have and another abroad year, either at one location or two locations. And I think in some cases you can have three semesters of abroad, and I'm gonna look into that. You have 14 different locations that you can choose from, and they will make sure you remember that. That's the highlight that they'll like to tell you, is that they have different, all kinds of locations around the world, on every continent except Antarctica. And I really liked that. I didn't like being not suppressed, but like boxed in to where I can only visit one location and then I can only stay in one campus or something. I, I liked the, the, what do I call them? Op, not opportunities, but the, the range of how I can pick. When they were describing the internships, they made it sound really great. And I feel like mo uh, most campuses and most universities are gonna do that. Obviously, they're gonna highlight the best parts and they're always gonna highlight like abroad and interning because that's something a lot of kids are looking for. They've highlighted the big names that people got internships from and even some small names that no one knows, they've talked about the internships that people have gotten and they're really cool. And going from different locations around the world, you have different opportunities to intern with different companies that you may never have expected. So you get to intern, and while you're interning there, you have loads of opportunities to network with the people in your company and also different students that you don't meet in your main campus. This campus in Shanghai has a really small grade. There's only about 300 or 350 people per grade. But that's a really small campus in general in like total. I think in New York, it's like 25,000 undergraduate people and that's tons. You're never gonna talk to even like one fourth of those people and you're never even gonna see them most likely. And you're gonna have probably some big classes. I've never been, so I can't speak about it. Maybe it's different and you have some small classes, but I feel like a lot of your classes, your basic classes that you have to have are gonna be big. And I wanted to have a small classroom setting so that I could connect more with my professor. I feel like I learn better when I'm connected to the person teaching me and I'm not just getting information thrown at me for a test in four weeks. That's pretty much all for this video. This is mostly just what I thought. Next week I'm doing a video about how much it costs to apply for college and how much it's costing me before I even step foot on the campus. I was gonna try to make this video better today than yesterday because I didn't really get some points across that I really wanted to, but it feels like that I'm not making any progress in this video today either. So I'm just gonna end it. If you want to see video next week, part two, then go ahead and check it out. If you don't, then whatever. <laughs> like always, have a great day.